hope you're hungry because you're listening to Everybody Eats. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Everybody Eats podcast. We're here with a really special guest today. We're joined here with Mr. Andre Hatchett. Thank you very much for taking your time out this evening and joining us on today's episode. How are you doing? Appreciate you guys having me. It's an honor to be here. For sure, for sure. Thank you, thank you. So, first things first, um, make sure you're following us on all platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you're following us. Instagram, that's everybodyeats.pod. That's where we post all our clips content make sure you're following us on youtube we're trying to grow out that youtube channel so make sure you're following us all our episodes are on there um and we've been having some really great guests lately so definitely make sure that you're tuning in what's, so, our, what's our twitter handle and the twitter handle is eve pod so follow us on twitter that's eve pod we got some nice little tweets over there you know some some bangers we'll, we'll bless over there and we'll throw some of our clips on there too so make sure you're following us on all platforms you don't want to miss all right. On that note, let's get it rolling, Mr. Andre Hatchett. Um, before you start, real quick, I like to tell people how I meet the guests. So, Andre Hatchett, I uh, we met at the EYL event back December 19. This is pre-Corona days. Um, that's the same event where I ran. Um, I met Carl Hale, um, Rashana Scott. So that event, you know, it happened at this point, it's like nine months ago or so. I don't even. Yeah, pretty much like nine months ago, still like those connections, um, they still lasted. And then look at it like, you know, the other day I'm on IG Live and then Andre Hatchet on the live saying, let's get let's get this episode done. So make sure we're reaching out, networking, you never know um, how those connections work and how, and how we can help each other out in the future. So that's a little bit how we met. Andre Hatchet, if you can speak about yourself, where are you from, what do you do, and then we get the episode rolling. We'll do, we'll do. And I'll add one more thing on to how we met, because I meet a lot of people, right? But um, you were cool. You were cool. You were nice. <laughs> uh, good conversation. And I heard you guys laughing, but that make or breaks how a, how a, a relationship is going to go. <laughs> a lot of people, they're all about them. They, they, they just don't do it right. So I appreciate the way that you presented yourself. Appreciate it. And you and my, and my, um, my ginger ale homeboy were there. And I, oh man, like, like, y'all are cool younger brothers that's been doing your thing. I, I, I respect the how how young y'all were who, and y'all were even there. Like, like that was some OG stuff. I respect that. But uh, so yeah, once get uh, once give you that shout out. So Andre Hatchet, thirty eight. What do I do? Uh, online course creator. Uh, bought my first property at twenty two, second at twenty three. Of Jamaican descent. Grew up in New York. Now in Atlanta. Uh, most known for probably my mobile notary business in my, in, my, in my mobile notary academy. Started in 2015, trained thousands of people and helped a bunch of them leave their full-time job. And a lot of them were able to start their business as a mobile notary public, part-time or in or full-time. Um, I haven't had a job in 11 years, so so I, I feel really good about that. Invest, silent investor in a bunch of properties in Detroit and uh bending machine routes with hot capital probably some more stuff in there but I'll, I'll leave it at that gosh you got you so man of many talents right there so um one thing i was on your website and i saw um you speak about the black business challenge the Ooh, hashtag okay. yeah so, um, i want you if, if you could speak a little bit more about uh what was the challenge what was the purpose of it and, and yeah scroll back right there yeah so <laughs> Now it's become kind of popular to be black and to be pro-black and, and support by businesses. So we're, we're, I'm not even going back that far. I'm going back six years, my early 30s. It wasn't. And when I say it wasn't, it wasn't from our own community like that. Like I had a lot of our people call me racist and make fun of me. Um, when you <laughs> when you push the slave out of people, they get defensive. They want to fight you. So that's what I did. So, so me and my man, Michael Bell, shout out Michael Bell. It's not active anymore, but, but we started a website called Buy Black NYC to make it easier to find Black-owned businesses. At that time, there were no directories for Black-owned businesses in New York City. And uh, it's consistently and slowly gained traction. Dr. Boyce Watkins helped give us a plug. I started to do a lot of work with his platforms and that got the word out there. And I just literally went around to black owned businesses because I'm just anti excuses, y'all. I'm just anti like, like get out of here with that bullshit. Yes, some things are harder. Yes, we've been through a lot of stuff, but we can do something. We can do something. So 
I just went around with my, I don't know if I even had an iPhone then. I think I, I just had had an iPhone and videotaped black owned businesses that I went to in New York City and surrounding suburbs and created a hashtag and made it like a year long challenge. And it just, and it, and it grew a life of its own. And I, I guess you say I'm one of the innovators of the last decade with this black business renaissance. Got it, got it. So Wait, I kind of want to, Unless you have anything to add. No, no, you go ahead. Um, so I, I guess two things. Where do you find yourself like making um, your first, owning your first property at 22, you said second at 23. And then on top of that, what do you think brought you to uh, create that directory for, uh, you know, black businesses? Yeah. So, okay, before I say it, my words are my own. They're not yours, okay? I'm looking for myself. Um, I don't like taking orders from white people. I never have. It's just not my thing. Personal stamps, personal stamps. Now, for me, at the time I had a job, I was working with, with, with special needs children, and I was like, I'm not going to work all day for them, um, them meaning white people, and, and then go give them my rent money after me working all day. It just was too much money going out. So I said, I literally had no life from like 19 to 22. I wrote down every dollar I earned and spent for like two and a half, for in two years, maybe two and a half years. Every dollar I earned and spent, I was looking at 15, 15 an hour. So I didn't have much wiggle room to spend frivolous money. I had to dictate, I had to send my money somewhere. I had to hold my money accountable. So I saved, even when my car died, I had a 1990 or so Acura Legend, it died. I was on the bus. I was on the bus with 21 with like 10, 12 bands in the bank, 720 FICO score. I could have financed within reason, like any car I wanted, within reason. But I was like, no, I'm gonna ride this bus because if you guys know about DTI, if my um, debt would have went up, I would not have been able to buy the property because my income wasn't high. So I just did it and I was able to close at 22. 23 was I got a townhouse with my aunt also in Georgia. Uh, that was a little bit easier to swing because I had help with that. But but I was just pissed off. I was pissed off. I didn't want to give my money out like that. And I have a saying that I say is called own or be owned. It's just, man, like, especially as men, we need some dominion over our life, some kind of control, and our assets is a great way to do it. And for the website, you know how it started? I think Michael, um, who built it with me, he was he was more of the technical guy. He posted a comment on Facebook. We went to school together. He was like, are there any black-owned businesses in New York City? Any black-owned business directors in New York City? I was like, I don't think so. Let's build one. And and we built it. Got it. Got it. That was it. That's true. Simple. You want it, you just go do it. You know. That's, that's what Make it happen. Do. Figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, for sure. It's not a drive to go do that. Seriously. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that kind of ties into a little discussion I wanted to have today about group economics, right? Um, that's something I've been hearing a lot, um, especially um, in in referring to black community, our community, the idea of like. Black brown communities, right? Just making sure, um, you know, that kind of ties in with generational wealth. Of, you know, for example, if, you know, if I need to go to a barber, I'm going to go to a black barber, right? If I yeah. want to call a plumber, I'm going to call a black plumber. If I'm going to, you know, need something to do handiwork, the person's going to be black, right? So um, I think that kind of goes with, um, you know, Black Business Challenge by Black, right? So I kind of want to get your take on Kruger. Group economics, how do you define it? Um, and I guess your stance on that. You guys are good. Uh, <laughs> you guys are good. Um, group economics to me, in practical form, a group is more than one person. You do not need 10 people. You do not need to start a movement. You don't need 5,000 people to practice group economics. It's you, y'all two right now. This is group economics, right? Mm -hmm. It's more than one black person coming together for a common cause who can also practice delayed gratification with getting to the goal. Real simple, plain language. I know a lot of us, we want to start a movement. We, 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 we need a movement. I've done some of my best work with two to five people. 
on a project, so two to five people. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want a fund with 5,000 people inboxing me all damn day about, about, about so I don't know if that's me. It's yeah. definitely not me right now. Mm-hmm. But two to five people, man, we can get some stuff done. I've got some, I'm very proud of some things I've gotten done with, with a small group of people. So for me, it, uh, it's consistent action um, with more than one black person with, 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 with us realizing that it probably will not be overnight uh, to get it done. Got it. No, I, I like that. I think I think I, I like that. Um, I'm similar to that too. I think I prefer smaller, smaller groups and bigger groups to me personally, mm-hmm. um, just, just to get work done. But no, I, I definitely like how you said it doesn't have to be necessarily a movement, right? Like you can practice group economics and kind of like really kind of like where where you simply shop, like simply where you buy, where think you go. your product, right? You think of uh, the episode of um, Killer Mikey had the documentary yeah, on yeah, the yeah. that we bring up a bunch of times in the episode he went to go buy black. And he was in Atlanta, right? And he, he was just like, even in Atlanta, it was hard to do. Um, but that whole concept of, you know, I'm gonna go to the, the market that's black, I'm gonna go to the farm that's black, right? Like that's how you can uh, example of how you can practice food care economics. Um, especially yeah. because other communities do so, you know, you, yeah. can, you, you come from New York where you have a lot of Jewish communities, um, you know, in New York and that's what they practice, you know? And I, I always respected that a lot because it's, you know, you're keeping the money in your community, you're helping your neighbor, you're helping each other. Um, and you see that in lots of communities in New York. So. Um, I think I definitely believe that's something that our community, we can do more, we can do better. Um, like you said, it doesn't have to be a whole movement. It could just be a few people. Like, I exchange with you, I exchange with you. Yeah, it doesn't got to be a big thing. But I'm sorry, can you repeat the, the definition again, if you don't mind? I've been okay. trying to say it. But... <laughs> For me personally, it's more than one Black person working together on a common goal where we are practicing delayed gratification to achieve the goal. Can you explain right. what you mean by uh, delayed gratification for achieving the yeah. goal? Yeah, so for me, right, at 19 to 22, uh, the fun years, all that good stuff, I had to literally wait two to three years for me to get a property. That wasn't fun. And I was making, I guess, good money in some standards. You know, fifteen dollars an hour at that time probably was good money, like thirty thousand dollars a year. I didn't have a lot of debt. Uh, I had to watch me put my money in the savings account and not touch it at twenty twenty one years old. Like, I don't know if I look. I'm I'm a lot more fun than I look. I don't think I look as much as fun as I am in real life, but I have a good time. So I I, I had to sit home, and read books, and for me to get to that goal, it, it took a lot of discipline and for me not to focus on going out with even a lot of my friends who were doing well and home from college and had careers, already graduated, had careers. I, I, I just couldn't hang with them. So I had to just have my goal in mind and know that it's not going to happen now, but me actively still work on it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's such a discipline oriented like definition. I feel like when, when, um, when Bensky told me offline, um, the question and, 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 uh, the turn, you know, I can add a completely different, different idea of, of what your answer is. So I'm really like kind of shocked that it is what it is in a good way though. You know, it's that's a cool. different, uh, aspect and, and, perspective on on I guess that term especially I feel like it could be used to uh, you can apply what you just said to you know everything that's going on right now you know and yeah totally totally uh, totally and I have some friends who aren't maybe I guess I'm like a public figure per se I have some friends who aren't but they buy there's a detergent called true detergent that's black owned I think they were in the show too in Killer Mike's show as well if I'm not mistaken okay. um, I actually know them they that the great guys, they're veterans, their son, one of their sons has a boxer's company called Champs, great dudes. I, but he's not outspoken per se, he, 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 he has a career, great family, he makes a ton of money uh, at his career, but he buys the true detergent. Uh, like that's his detergent that he uses in his house. For me personally, him and his family buying that as their go-to detergent, that's group economics, that's buying black. There are different ways. What I don't try to do is to label what other people need to do for themselves. I don't want to be like a, a cult leader. 
yeah. I just want to push a positive message out there consistently. Yeah. And I hope it gets to somebody. Got it. And how you apply it is how you apply it. I mean, yeah. So. My thing is do something, man. Do something to put the race forward. And I'm happy. And, and I thank you for it. Sure, for sure. So uh, that goes with one last uh, the last topic I want to go over is creating your own opportunities. Um, so I see that you're a prime example of that with your notary course. With um, you said you're, you're saving up to to buy your real estate property when you're in, in your early twenties, um, and this other thing that you do. So um, I guess kind of like your, your take on like the importance of people creating their own opportunities, especially in today's climate when we have social media, when we have um, yeah. all these tools at our hands where you know it's it's really easy. Like you can start a brand, you can start a business and couple minutes, you know what I'm saying? It's like on the Instagram page, but like pretty much your stance and importance on um, creating your own opportunities. Yeah. So for me, <laughs> it's like oxygen, right? So, so, so I, I <laughs> once in a while I have like a nightmare that I have a job again and I like wake up in a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I just, I'm not a fan of just taking orders from people all day long. Personal statement, not forcing on anybody else. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a life force and I think us as black men even if you have careers even if you love your career I know people who love their career or, or ha ha happy with it whatever I just want you to have something of your own on the side whether it be real estate I own some properties where I own like five percent of the house five ten percent oh, I might own five percent of the vending machine route like I, I'm a minority owner in a lot of things but with ownership, when you have cash flow, if things are working correctly, and you have a sense of pride and personal fulfillment that can only come via ownership. So no matter where you are in your life, I just want us as black people, let's see black brothers to have some dominion, some ownership. And if we're being if we're being raw, <laughs> you want to impress the members of the opposite sex or a member, if you're just any one person, um, own some shit. Own some shit, it automatically increases, and in, in most times, her uh, her desire to follow your lead. Not lying, definitely not lying. But not nah, ownership, one hundred percent. I think you know uh, we like. I think as I when Corona started, I did a bunch of videos talking about like you know create content, create content, create content. Um, yeah, a lot of that was based on like just ownership. Like this is the perfect time to start a brand. And it's great. Like I've been seeing a lot of people. Um, I think it's becoming more and more popular. Um, yeah. And I'm careful how I use that word because I don't want it to be popular as in a fad. But I hope. Yeah. Trendy. Yeah. Trendy, like, I don't yeah. want it to be yeah. trendy that it's like I'm gonna start this and pro black is trendy. But I think it's good to see at least there's some sort of awareness and some sort of you know sense of it in the air. Um, but like seeing people just like simply like earning art, owning a brand, owning a page, starting to get into real estate, like I think that's I think that's beautiful, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, it, like you said, ownership. Um, it, I think it just gives you it gives you power, it gives you say, it gives you leverage. You know, yeah. especially where we're we're in a point of society where we're always talking of like we're we're in a point of society where you know, we're minorities in society. Like, how do we increase our influence? How do we increase why yeah. what people listen to us? How people listen to us? Why people listen to us? Is ownership. People will yeah. respect you when you own things, whether it's again property, like you know, property, real estate, company, whatever. You own something, then you can be like, all right, well, you know, you're gonna give them, you're gonna you're gonna give them a little bit more respect on their name. So yeah, yep. Yeah. And you respect yourself more. Like y'all yeah. got this thing going. Has your confidence not increased enough? That you guys have something that, that, that you can point to and promote. Of course. Of course, I'm proud of it. Proud of it. Like working mm -hmm. on it. Worked on it. Did it for me, man. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like a child that yeah, makes you proud. Exactly. You know? That's exactly what it is. Uh, That's exactly what. And I don't have kids yet, yeah. but I imagine it's 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 like, it's in that same ballpark, fam. Right. It's in that same ballpark. We're seeing something grow. We're creating yeah. something. We're nurturing something. Like it's a big deal. Um, and how's your t-shirts going? Uh, they're going well, right? So we just we did a great summer line. Um, collab with our boy uh, Sosa. He was on the podcast, so we did. Oh, dope. Um, we did some silk hoodies. Um, so we saw that, and again, like we just hit two years of doing Kilty, and it's been, you know, nice. Kilty lately, especially now lately. Is speaking about ownership, like it went from thinking of it as just like a brand to now it's become it's becoming more and more just like part of me. You know what I'm saying? Like Kilty. That's just dope. Like, a dope way for me to just, like, express myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can yeah. express my, my interest in culture, express my interest in fashion through Kilty. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's just another you know beautiful aspect that you have with ownership and having something that you can call yourself. Oh, no. no. I have a question for you guys. I don't know if you guys um heard the Breakfast Club today, but Charlemagne has his podcast. I saw the article yeah, about it, yeah. With with IR. How you guys feel about that? Uh, I didn't. I only really saw article um article headlines. I didn't really like read too much into it. Um, but from what I understand, I, I believe it's like pro black something. But I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you read about it or? Um, I heard him speak about it, and I was following what what what, what him and Joe had going on the past week or so. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think it's needed. And I actually think that even as popular as podcast is, it's still just scratch the surface. Like this thing is going to get way bigger. Yeah. Way bigger. Oh, everyone has a podcast. Everyone does not have a podcast. Yeah. Everyone does not, but everyone's going to be listening sooner than later. So yeah. I think there's a really high ceiling for you guys. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a very, very interesting year. I met a lot of people, met you through it. Right mm-hmm. now. So, yeah. So I'm excited on how it goes. Um, on that note, we can switch over to our second segment. We'll do the quote of the day. Um, and Eden, he has that quote for us. All right, you ready? Yep. Let's cook. So the quote of the day is, what we desire comes through participation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. All right, so you have any guesses? Comments? Tips? Nah. Um, all right, from where I saw where I saw it was a rapper. Okay. From New York. Uh don't know where they're from. Is it more recent or like old school rapper? It's not old school. He's it's a he, so um it sounds like something that Biggs will say, Biggs Burke. He says stuff like that. Uh, it's I would I don't know when he started, but he's he's more recent. He's more recent. More recent, okay. Joey? Nah. Uh, ASAP Ferg? No. Rocky? No. Uh, oh, oh, you know. No. Are we oh, in the right borough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... Are you in the, um, no, not in the right borough. Is he from a borough? Yeah, he's from a borough. Mino? No. Fabulous? No. Oh, that's a good one. Am I in the right borough now? 50? No. I don't know what borough Fab's from, but. He's from Brooklyn. No. Okay. No. From the Bronx? No. What? Who is it? We, we, <laughs> you guys really can't tell? Oh, nah. Us. No. Damn. I'm done? Yeah, I'm done. All right. I, all right. If I'm wrong about this person's borough, I'm sorry, but uh, it's Davies. He's from Harlem. Yeah. He's from Harlem. Harlem. He's from Harlem. Yeah, he's from El Barrio, Spanish Harlem. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. He's at Ferg. Fer- oh, okay. my bad. I didn't know where Ferg was from. Yeah. He's from Harlem, too. He's from uh, Harlem. Where are you from? The, the uh, DMV? You're from the DMV, too? Wow. No, we're both from New York. We're both from New York. We're both from New York. Okay, okay. Yeah, so right now we're, we're located um, in Southern Virginia, but we're originally both from New York. Dope, dope, dope. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, yeah, can you say that one more time? All right, so what we desire comes through participation. Yeah, what we desire. I, I agree. That's a fact, right? If you want something, you got to go get it. Like, you can't send it. Perfect story of it. Yeah, he wants, story. you know, what he wants. Yeah. Ted wants, slash wants, came through him actively participating in savings and not, you know, living it up with his friends for, you know, those two, three years. So, if you want, it literally <laughs> comes through active participation. Yeah, and if I give a message to the younger people who might be watching this, is it pays off. Like, I missed out on something, but I got all of that back in my 30s. I got all of it back. Like, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. You always hear parents talk about, you know, sacrifice. It's sacrifice. hard, bro. It's hard. Right. Oh, but, uh, it's crazy hard. Let's not get it twisted. Like, it's really yeah. hard. <laughs> right. let's, let's not even do that. Yeah, no, totally. Definitely. I mean, I, I've only, it's only been a year since I've been down here and, like, just, like, seeing it, like, yeah, it, it sucks sometimes. Yeah. But, like, um, when you got that, like, further goal in mind, like, you know, it, it kind of, think about it later, it's like, I right, it's only going to help you. But um, that's what it takes, yeah. Nothing comes easy. Yeah, yeah. So, so, all right. So, on that note, um, we'll conclude the second segment. Take a quick break before we start segment three. Welcome back, everyone. Segment three of the Everybody Eats podcast. 
No, I have to give a quick shout out to one of my boys, one of our boys on the Everybody Eats All Stars. Yeah. Mr. Carl Hale is good as hell. You guys got to go see that. This guy is <laughs> very flavor. Man, like, we had him on the podcast probably, I think Almost I was here. Coming up on a year. Almost a year. I think it was like December 2019. He was, a, he was on an episode and talked about his ginger lemonade. Um, honestly, guys, it's amazing. I, I tried it for the first time Saturday. I Finally, co-sign. Yes, it tastes good. <laughs> it, it really is good as hell. It is good as hell. That's what's up. <laughs> so get you guys. Make sure you guys are on that. Follow them um, on the social media page, social media pages, Ginger Hale Lemonade, um, uh, and make sure you go cop yourself a bottle. Um, but on that note, let's get into the notary business that I feel like what you're most known for, Mr. Hatchet. So, um, if what is a notary? Why do you do it? What is a mobile notary? All that good stuff. If you can give an explanation of how you got into the business, what is notary, why do people use it, and we'll get the conversation rolling. All right, let's cook. A notary public is someone who is licensed by their state that they live in, uh, and they are licensed to act as an impartial witness when witnessing and notarizing documents. So let's say I don't know you. I, you need a will notarized. I'm going to verify that your, your ID is valid. I'm going to watch you sign. I am going to sign and I'm going to stamp. And now it is an official document that, that, that has been notarized, notarized by the state. Real, real simple. Got it. So who recognizes that it's notarized? And that's, it's like, it's like a state, like when you hand it into someone and you're like, all right, it's notarized. This is official. Yep. Uh, it's, so, so we're governed by the state. States to hold our license. So if we're in Georgia, uh, whoever you hand the document to, if it's the bank, a title company, law firm, etc., um, it's it's recognized by the state that I am licensed in and that we notarize the document in. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. Um, and when slash who needs like papers notarized? Like that's everybody. Not, that's, <laughs> that's not something uh, you will run into every day. So like. I, yeah, guess, I, I know what you mean. Like, when do you, um, when do you, do you yeah. So who needs documents notarized? A lot of people. So our main clients are uh, loan closing companies, individuals who need health care proxies, living trusts, wills, power of attorneys notarized. If you're buying or selling a car, you might need a car title notarized. Um, if you're taking a child out the country and they're a minor and both parents are in going, you need to get a, a parental consent form notarized. There are there are a lot, whole, whole lot of different reasons that fe- that fe- that people need to get documents notarized, but those are the most popular. And we also do fingerprinting services. So if you're getting a gun permit, a nursing license, your accounting license renewed, your physician license, we do fingerprints for those people as well. Got it. Got it. Um, so how do you get into that? Because I know me personally. Um, the only notaries I know, I think, were at, like banks. Like I needed some for like, yeah. you know, I'm like under like 18 or so. Like I needed mm-hmm. something like signed and notarized. He's the first notary person I met. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you 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 probably met people who have license but who don't use it as a business. So mm-hmm. for me, um, I started it because so I'm more on the practical side of life rather than maybe the upfront passion side of life per se. So for me, I was at the job, um, great fulfilling work, but I don't like working for people. Y'all know that already. And, and we had some mutual friends who told me about another friend named Ricky. Shout out Ricky Simon. And, and they said, you know, he, he goes somewhere, he shows up, he makes like 65, 50 to 200 bucks there for like 15 minutes to an hour. That was all I heard. <laughs> all I needed to hear, right? Because at the time, it took me all day to make $100. So I was like, this is, okay. Let's, so um, I shadowed Ricky, bought him lunch, took him out, and saw what he did. I was like, I can do that. Then I realized I can middleman the service, so I can get a client to pay me 150 I can give someone else 75 or 100 bucks. I can make 55 50, 75, 100 bucks for me just being the middle person, kind of like wholesaling real estate, right? So I was like, okay, there's a double whammy. I could be self-employed and be a business owner at the same time. So I, I took the test. Uh, that, that was that summer when I was, I, I was 23 years old, I believe. It was that summer. Took, I, I failed the first time. I was pissed off. I took a class. 
come study for the test, and then I pass the test, and I've been doing that business ever since. So, shoot, 14, 15 years. Yeah. Wow. So I was gonna say, like, how how hard is it, and like, how do you even like? Do you just like go on the website? Do you sign up? Like, what's the process to becoming um, a notary? Yeah, so I'm not a test taker, so tests for me are probably harder than like you guys, right? So I'm not, a, I just like my thing like that. So not, but here's the cool thing: not every state has a test. Some mm -hmm. states it's just paperwork, but in New York, everything in New York is harder than it is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> everything yeah. New York makes it hard for everything. So um, step one is you go to your Department of State website and or your Secretary of State website and they will give you your state requirements to get a new public license. That's where you're going to start off. Got it, got it. And then from there, um, if say like I had some paperwork that I would need and I would just call you and say, hey, can you come here and notarize it? Well, it wouldn't be me because I'm not in your state, but you could call my company and, and we would have somebody place. come, we would have somebody come to meet you out, out there. Yeah, 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 at your house. Or, or the location of your choice. So another reason, so the, this is a business that people pay for convenience. There are notaries at some banks, but not all banks have notaries there, and banks don't notarize every kind of document. So th th there are people who would rather pay for convenience rather than pay to be inconvenient. So if you're on your lunch break, you only have an hour, you need to get some documents notarized, you could risk going to three banks, and none of them have notaries there, or that are notarized your particular document, and now you don't have any food and you have no documents notarized. That's not our customer. Our customer is saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm able to figure it out, but I'd rather pay this person 65, 75, 100 bucks, come do it for me while I'm at, at my office eating my lunch. So that's our clientele base, and that's who we teach people on um, who to market to. Got it, got it. So then, again, so I guess my next question is going to say, how do you, so you've been doing this for 15 years give or take so kind of like how did, how did that business start how has it grown and you moved states you said so how has that affected um i'm assuming that's a new license you have to get and stuff so like how was that journey yeah so i'm not um that active in the business on a self-employed aspect anymore currently i'm more just the middleman with the business okay. but uh, so let me we have to begin it started where i saw ricky make 300 bucks on a day and i made 100 bucks on a day and I needed $500 or so to start up. So here's what you need to start. You need to get your, your um, license through the state. You need to get a stamp. You need to get some pens. You need to get some marketing material. That, and that's bare bones startup costs. So it usually takes between two and 500 bucks, right? So I said, I can do this. This, this makes sense for me to do. So I did it. Uh, I did it in the evenings because I had the full-time gig. And then it was just a lot of work, it was too much work. So I, I, I left the job at 24, 25, the economy tanked. So I had to go back to the same job I had. Luckily, even though I don't love jobs like that, I'm a good employee. So I was able to get, I was able to get hired back the same day for 18.60 an hour. I remember the day, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Everything went up since I left. And, and, and I stayed for another six to eight months. And after that, I left again. I haven't had a job since. Uh, and that's been 11 years or so. So, but this business has paid me every, I want to say every week, but I don't want to give any wrong information. It has paid me at least every month since I had my license. Mm. Every single month for these years since I had my license. Whether it be me doing the job, someone else doing the job, it has always paid me. So I tell people, it isn't the flashiest thing in the world, but it's consistent as all heck. Yeah. Um, and it, after not taking a whole lot of startup costs, for me, it was a win. It got me out of the full-time workforce. And, and, and here we are. I taught 1,000 people how to do the same thing. I'm able to work from my computer. Uh, I teach people all over the world, all over the country. And so it's crazy what happens with life, man. Yeah. Things just seem to work out when you do stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I was gonna say I know one of the things that you offer are um, some online like an e-course, like an online. Yeah, course. yeah. Um, how do you how do you how did you get started into that? Is that just telling people how to get there? You know, if you can explain that process. Um, and then I kind of want to get into like how can people themselves benefit from creating an online course for whatever that they need. 
Yeah. So, and, um, so I've been doing the business ever since you know early twenties, but I was thirty three ish. 38, 33 ish. I was in a car accident in New York City. I was wearing very, very the bad taxi, so uh, I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to walk that well for a few months. So I'm like, damn, how am I gonna? How am I gonna make this thing work? Uh, Boyce Watkins, the doctor Boyce Watkins, was a friend of mine. He had started his Black Wealth Boot Camp, and I saw like, oh shoot, like people will pay you to learn what you got. Uh, like, you know, I got an idea. Uh, he was like, I'll help you push it. I was like, you will? I'm like, okay, cool. So I did it. <laughs> I didn't know exactly what I was doing, right? But I knew I had the information. I didn't, I hadn't created PowerPoints or PDFs before. I found someone who had. I found somebody who built websites. Like I, I, I literally put it together piece by piece by piece. And that part's important because a lot of us, we aren't going to start because we haven't mastered everything. You just got to know enough to start and you get better as you go along. So did that. It was October, September, October of 2015. Uh, and I've been doing it ever, ever since. And we have a 95, 96% not completion rate because not everyone follows through, but even people who don't follow through, they're still happy with the purchase. So yeah. it's really dope. It's, it's a really good feeling to be able to teach what you know help people get more income into their household and you're able to make an honest dollar for yourself. For me, it's like the best business ever. Pass it on, you know, pass it on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Owning something, creating your own opportunity, that goes, you know, way back to that. You invested in yourself, you learned Excellent. the skill, and now you're able to pass it on and help other people do the same. And like you said, it's a practical job. It's like, like it may not be the most flashiest thing, but like honest work. It's honest work. It, honest work. You're it your own boss. Off, you know what I'm saying? Like your own make your own hours. Like come on, like yeah. Yeah. If you look at it like this, um, on average, each, each appointment on a low end pays sixty, higher end two fifty. Even if, if you're part time, you do two, three jobs a week. Like that's like a different life for a lot of people. A totally different life. Like that's your car paid off. That's your down payment. That's down payment money for your house. That's student loan money. That's dating money. You can have a whole different life. And if you go, I have a guy. His name is Malik. He's twenty three. He's in, he's in North Carolina. He made twelve thousand dollars in June. That's crazy. And he's full time gig. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like he just took it and ran. If you don't, so so so. Here's who succeeds. You just don't complicate it. If you think about this, just keep it simple, which I, which I say every class because people just have this need to make things harder. But you smart people. People who are good at academics, they make things hard because they think everything has to be like physics yeah. or sequential math. No, business is, is, is a lot of consistent simple stuff so if you can keep things simple you could win and you actually um how to how to teach a course what have people asked you um asked you the most for so 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 if it's you guys it might be podcasting for me it's mobile noted for someone else it might be real estate we a lot of us have a talent in which we know something one or two things better than a lot of other people and and a, and a lot of us are sitting on that thing if you could tap into that and deliver it in a simplistic manner, you could charge for it. I like that. Simplistic matter. And I'll give you one more thing. You know what a whole lot of people need help with? Accountability. Yep. Preach. There aren't enough accountability coaches and programs out there where you literally hold somebody accountable to work on their goal. Did you explain why that's important? Because most people suck. <laughs> and, they're not gonna, <laughs> and they're not gonna follow through they are gonna get lazy and and their egos are too big. It's, it's crazy how people who don't like their life have such big egos it boggles my mind but and, and their egos are really big so, but if you could tap into somebody and make and help them achieve their goal they will pay you Like the social spirit transcendence of becoming your best version of yourself that's like episode six um shout out, so shout out to Sosa for that and um one of my boys uh Emmanuel Perez you know shout out to him we haven't had him on the podcast yet but um he was I I contribute him he was one of the big reasons why uh the podcast actually started because when I moved down here um 
I was able to get through with him. Um, and I told him about the podcast and I told him about the oh. idea, but I didn't start yet. And he told me, um, he was like, yo, like, you have until next week to start. And like, it's not. It's a like, good friend. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's a I good was like, friend, man. Dang, <laughs> I was like, like, now I, I can't not do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, you I out. I kept putting it off. He was like, nah, you have, to, you have to start by next week. I was like, and literally that week, I have, you know, um, That's raw. Corey, he was, um, I was staying with Corey back then, and then we recorded like episode one, and since then, that's how it started. So, um, accountability, holding people accountable to their things, I, I, I definitely feel that. That's a huge opportunity, uh, especially now with the whole other things being online and people not being in, in, in the formal school setting anymore. If you if you built a great ass like, program that's structured where you might even have a text outreach program, you can make a lot of money charging people a monthly, quarterly, or yearly fee for that. That's a great course right there. Sure, sure. So keep that in mind. So that's a nice jump for anybody listening. If you have any talent, skill. Um, like you said, like everyone has a superpower. Everyone has a yeah. talent. Everyone has a skill. You know what I'm saying? That kind of goes with uh, one, the last topic I wanted to go. We made a video about following your gift um, instead of your passion. Um, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was a good one. We spoke about this last episode that we recorded with Mouse Jones. We briefly spoke about that um, following your gift instead of your passion because if you're good at it, it's naturally going to come good. It's naturally going to come easy to you. Whereas your passion, like. Maybe you're not really built for that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you could be yeah. possibly wasting time or energy on something that you need. In this example, it's like, for you. yeah, it ain't meant for you. Like in that, in that example, he was talking about a lot of people want to be rappers, but like they can't rap, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you could use your, you probably have a bunch of talent and skill in something else where it's like, you know, don't wait, like maybe rap is not really for you, brother. You know? <laughs> so, That's real. So, That's real. Yeah, so um, so I think that that kind of goes ties back into what you said of like following your gift um, instead of instead of your passion because a lot of times you do hear follow your passion, follow your passion. Follow it's your the passion. most oversaturated phrase of the past three years. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm the one who who said that a lot, you know. But then like again, like once I saw that video, I was like, dang, like you put that into perspective and put that into reality. If you're blessed, you can have both. You're, you're, yes. you're, what you're passionate about is what you're good yeah. at, you know, vice versa. If you're blessed, that's amazing. Um, but sometimes what you like and what you're good at aren't the same thing, you know? And here's the thing, right? Um, let, that is what I call front-end passion and back-end passion, right? So front-end passion means that you enjoy what you're doing along the way. But there's this thing that's not talked about enough called pride and personal fulfillment and personal fulfillment and completion. Most people don't complete things because they're holding themselves accountable. That's the feeling that you get once you like, wow, like I, I did that thing. Then you have passion that grows from that. It's just on the back end. So you can still get passion. It's just it just might not be up front. And I talk about it so much because most people quit within 45 days of a new venture. You look at people who hop around every three months on a business, every six months, you're like, oh, look, look what I'm doing now. And, and, they, and they drop off. You, they typically drop off within 45 days because it gets boring. Most things get boring along the way. You just have to fight through that boring period to become successful. If your, your gift is what comes easiest to you that you can make money for. Like, that's my terminology, right? So if you're good at something or great at something, you get paid for it, you can make that money and then go spend the money on the freaking beach or your passion. I just left Jamaica. That shit was fucking lit, <laughs> right? All inclusive uh, with a lovely woman I'm involved with. Like, you can't tell me that ain't passion. Like, all you can eat, all you can drink, all-inclusive hotel in Jamaica with a great lady, yeah, like, like that's a win. So I just want pe I just want people, especially us as black men, to have money coming in at all times. Spend it, invest it. And the people who are younger, if you just do stuff you're good at in your 20s, acquire even, let's say, like two or three properties, before you get to my age, and if you get some Roth IRA stuff and some stocks, but I get the mid thirties, you're freaking loaded. Yeah. You're freaking loaded. Well, I, you know, I had a born twenties, but your thirties, forties, and fifties is going to be all 
cultivated off of what you did in your 20s and you can have a great life. So if you have front end passion, great, man, but stick to something, pride and personal fulfillment will kick in and you'll have the pride of knowing that you finished something. I appreciate that. I think it's a lot of them. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of truth. That's a lot of truth. Um, before I end off, I just want to say um, that reminds me when we first met, I think the last piece of advice uh, you told Paul and I were like, you know, I think you asked us for our age. And like, oh my gosh, like, you guys are so young. I'm glad. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Like, stick with it. Keep networking. Keep coming to these events. And don't get nobody pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I did so, say that. I forgot I said that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just always coming in with the wisdom. Always coming in. So, uh, it's so far. It's reminding me. <laughs> forgot I said that. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't do that. Wait. Uh, hopefully, you guys are married first, but definitely wait. Late 20s, early 30s, maybe even mid 30s. But, you know, get your stuff down pat now. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, so on that note, man, I want to thank you very much for coming on today's episode. How can people reach out to you? How can they learn more about yourself, your business, or how can they, how can they reach you? Yeah, yeah. So uh, my personal website is my name, Andre C. Hatchet. Instagram, Andre Hatchet. Uh, on YouTube, Andre C. Hatchet. And, oh, I got bu- I books. I books too on Amazon under my name, Andre Hatchet. Gotcha. All right. So again... Make sure you're plugged in if you're interested in notary and just learning more. Um, make sure you're plugging in on Andre C. Hatchet. Man, thank you very much for coming on today's episode. We really appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks. it, you guys. Stay healthy, man. And Thanks. I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. All right, guys. I appreciate it. All right, man.